hey, I'm glad you subscribed to those free video series of our upcoming online workshop. As you guessed, this workshop is going to be about V-Ray portfolio and everything around it, including social promotion and web marketing. Today, we're going to cover part one, the approach and the attraction grabber. So take pen and a piece of paper to make some notes. Good portfolio is a combination of your driven energy and the content delivery. If you can represent your work in a way that will make a reviewer reply to your email, you've done part one. In today's world, we get easily distracted just because we have all that media around us. And it's so hard to keep focus and being productive with all that stuff that bugs us all the time. But if you'll be able to keep yourself on the track by completely discarding all the distractions, that's including Facebook, emails, text messages, and phone calls, you'll be able to get good projects and attract cool clients, simply because you will have that particular amount of energy to back up your approach. Try to focus on one thing only for about 100 to 120 minutes, that's about hour, hour and a half, and keep repeating this focus of portion throughout the whole day. This is how you will develop a pro habit that will allow you to have 100% concentration. Research shows that IQ level of people that multitask things throughout the day is equal to smoking pot activity, and even lower. So practice your concentration and focus for about one month and you'll be able to develop that pro habit. But first thing first, let me share a secret with you. The best way to create an amazing scene is to recreate it from the photograph. Many artists do it on a daily basis and get amazingly famous. For example, one of my favorite artists, Alex Roman. Most of his work out there based on the real existing architectural masterpieces. That leads to publications, interviews, and of course your price go higher. Once I thought it's cheating, till I've tried it. And boy, I tell you, that's not an easy task. I dare you to do it, just for fun. Here's a short tutorial that can spot some light on how to set up V-Ray camera and objects according to the reference. Iconic 3D renders is what makes people remember your name. All right, so how do you get an iconic image? Well, you train yourself based on the real photography. When you dive in into the real photo and you start analyzing how things work and how the textures and lighting react to each other, this is when you start to understand the real detail. And you calibrate your eye and later on you can start creating those awesome images without having some references to follow. But when you train, when you work, it's always good to have a, a photo, a solid photo that will teach you how to do things right. And in this training, I'm going to use linear set Moel scene. So I'm going to uh, analyze this image first and see how big is the windows. You can see it's pretty tall. It's about three meters, about uh, 10 feet. Um, this pool is about uh, six by eight meters. We have a chair and we have different materials also. So after analyzing it, uh, in this class, we have a full manual about uh, getting references and analyzing them. You can start doing your iconic image. And the first step will be to bring one piece of furniture that will have the right measurements and around it, you can start building up the objects. So it will help you to get the right proportion. Well, I've got my scene here and I'm going to show you today how you can set up your cameras in order to match uh, the angle of your photo. I'm going to go, as you can see here, I got a bunch of references here. I'm going to go with this uh, square reference, even if it's small. I can work with, uh, with it in max. It's always recommended to have high quality references. So I'm gonna drag and drop, and uh, I'm gonna click OK to have the viewport and environment map. This is just for setting the cameras, it's not for lighting. Okay, so here it is. We have that image and it's an holographic view. Now, what I like doing is I like always bringing an old camera because starting Max 16, they, uh, they removed the very physical camera from this dash and they made one physical camera that is uh, standard, but it's pretty much got the same options. I uh, never used it because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lazy old school and I like working uh, with stuff that I used to work with. So I'm going to merge my old camera from uh, 
from one of my projects. And uh, if we take my camera here and we try to place it somewhere here, looking at my model, and we click C. We can uh, we can see exactly where's my uh, where's my background image. Oh, here it is. We can see that it's a uh, it's a good start. It's already start to uh, kind of look in the same way, but we need to match it. Now I'm not going to rotate my camera because I still wanted to uh, look forward, and all the all the objects needs to go in one line. So I'm gonna just rotate slightly the chair. It's about 20, 25 degrees, something like that. 22. And now I'm gonna go back to my camera and with this orbit view, I'll try to match more or less the position. So I'm zooming in, zooming out, like that. It's actually dolly, it's not zoom in, zoom out, it's a dolly in, dolly out, because I'm moving with all my camera. I'm not changing my focal length. Okay, and after getting this, right, I can start building all around it. So I like working with two screens. One is, is the one that's uh, got my background, and here I can start modeling. As you can see, I'm using square screen, so the screen the size of my uh, image here is pretty small, 500 by 500, but it's square. That means my rendering settings, my proportions, 1400 by 1400, gotta be also square in order to match it right. If your uh, proportions off, you will never be able to build the right objects. Okay, so going back to my references, I can see that the windows are pretty tall. I would say about close to 10 feet, three meters, more or less. So now I can go to left view and start doing, putting walls and start blocking the stage and move things around. So I'm gonna put one wall here and let's see how, how tall it is pretty tall so I'm gonna put 320 for my wall it's very close to 10 feet 3 meters is about 9.8 so I'm gonna do two walls and I'm gonna do I'm gonna click shift and drag so I'm duplicating and I'm gonna do those copy and here I can start blocking my windows. Now it's a little hard, but let's put the ground first. That way I will know where to put the window. So with the ground I go with the minus. I start from zero and I go down with the minus. So let's do minus one. And uh, let's give it some neutral texture and move this out a little bit. I'll move it to the edge of of the window right here. So this is where my windows are going to start and the walls. After that, I'm gonna have a little space to walk towards the pool. I'm gonna add it, add it to poly and move it. So always here, you can always switch from edged faces. I'm, I'm just clicking F3 and F4. F4 is just to get the lines, to get the wire. And F3 is to make it transparent so you can see uh, how it's working. Okay, so something like this will work fine. I'll stay in the wireframe mode because it's a little easier for me 
to keep blocking that portion here. All right, so you can see it's uh, pretty easy. It's not really a rocket science. But to get the right measurements and proportions, this is where your analytics, your eye vision and your uh, judgment comes into play. Uh, the real question is why are we actually doing it? Well, we're doing it because I don't want you to do the same mistake as I did. Uh, I worked many years for uh, really good companies and I was under NDA and I couldn't really show my work to anyone. And even after that, when I moved to a different company, I still couldn't show my work because they say, hey, we got paid for the work and um thank you very much that's about it but you, you cannot create you cannot get clients based on the work that we paid you for so it's fair enough and i do respect that but it doesn't help me <laughs> to get jobs or to make a nice portfolio so this is what i did i started doing uh, personal images from real photos okay so this is more or less how you block the stage and uh, let's put some also white textures on that here bring a cylinder for blocking this little table here so basically you see i'm putting different objects in different places in the scene according to the photo and they kind of help me to get this right okay I'm going this wall that I created I'm gonna make it three meters tall and it less wide so we see that my lines a little bit off on this camera so let's correct them and use some camera settings also um, as you see I'm using here 55 millimeters that's another analysis that comes from that the wider it is uh, the more narrow your focal length so 18 would give me a really wide wide angle and 35, the default, will give me pretty narrow, but this is a little bit more narrow, so I think it's about 55. 50, I guess, well, I, I put 55 to test it out. F number can be uh, 4, that's my default, I start from 4, and then I move it up to 5.6 or, uh, or 8, depends on the lighting and the scene, how things need to be exposed. and. I put 100 and 100 on my shutter and film speed and I we adjust, we adjust the color balance but I usually start from just pure white um, and this is how I'm fixing the lines those lines that not straight I'm doing guess vertical tilt and boom everything comes straightens straighten up okay so I'm gonna go again uh, to this view of wireframe and I'll move my window okay so it's a little floating just because we changed size it came up a little bit now we can drag it all the way down to the floor leave a little gap but generally speaking that's about it and I'm um, going to drop some glass texture on it we have a bunch of uh, materials that we give with with our uh, training but here I'm gonna use this basic glass okay now I don't have any lighting here 
let me just add maybe another wall behind it goes all the way up generally speaking I kind of blocked the space and now I can start working and adding different lights in here and uh, execute render so uh, in this training we're going to use HDRIs uh, with sun and additional lights and different Hollywood methods for blocking and flagging lights so uh, we'll get by the end of this training something that looks like this uh, pretty high quality see the carpet didn't came out exactly as that carpet that's more puffy and thick looking but my carpet is also pretty interesting and I'm showing some techniques for painting those uh, bended hair different directions okay so uh, this is how you start uh, just start placing the models the objects and start blocking your scene we have 10 references in the class so you can choose uh, one reference you don't have to follow uh, this particular one but if you want to do it you are more than welcome to the last part of this lecture is if I'll press alt B I will get that image file that I'm using here as a background, I can see the setup here. I can use environment, I can use user interface colors, but in this case, I can use this map. So if you wanna hide it, if you wanna remove it, you can click remove, or you can just switch to customize user gradient colors. And then boom, we don't have that image anymore in that scene. Okay, so this is how you start your uh, work with reference from image you place your camera you place your objects in the scene you try to match the angle and the perspective and then you start building objects all around it all right i hope you find this information useful and you were able to make some notes as you know good portfolio is a combination of set of tools that you use combined together with knowledge slash experience and this we're going to discuss in the next video Portfolio promotion and web marketing is the third step. And we're going to do a live webinar on that subject a couple of days from now. So make sure to follow. Alright, so this is it for now. Post your comments below, share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video. This was Alex, your video guide. Talk soon. Ciao.